we're going to walk through how to graph um, the relationship between the height of the water in a vase as a function of the volume of water when we start looking at a non-cylindrical vase. And so you keeping in mind, just a you know friendly reminder, so since height is a function of volume, that makes height our output and output variables go, oops, I totally spelled output wrong. Let me fix that, whoops, output. Output variables go along the vertical axis. Um, which you can already see in the sort of the graph I gave to you. And then the volume of the water is our input variable. And so that's going to go along our horizontal axis. And so when we're thinking sort of about amounts of change, what that tells me is we're going to sort of in our head be going, OK, for equal amounts of water added to the space, what's happening to that water level? And so when I'm thinking about that, I like to mark off some key parts of my graph where there are sort of changes in the vase that would result in maybe changes to how that height would be changing. Does that make sense? I know I just used the word changing a whole bunch of times. Um, so key parts of the bottle. The first key part point in the bottle uh, is always the bottom. Um, I like to call that point A and it's a key point because there is no water in the bottle. And therefore, there is no height. Uh, so we have a sort of point here at zero, zero, where there is absolutely uh, no volume and no height. And then another key point is obviously the very top of the bottle um, when it's all full. And that's going to be sort of, you know, the top of our graph. And I'm going to call that point D. You know, that's sort of at the end. Now, in this particular bottle, we have this sort of round part bottle vase um, we have this round part and then we have a sort of a narrow cylinder top now within the round circular body of this vase initially the vase is getting sort of wider and wider until it hits sort of the widest part of the base and so that actually is going to be one of our sort of key points along our vase and so we're going to call that b because up until from point A until we hit point B along the vase, our vase is getting wider and wider and wider and wider. Now, all of a sudden we pass point B and now my vase is getting narrower and narrower and narrower until it hits this mark where it becomes a cylinder. And so that's going to be our sort of final key area of our vase. So I'm just sort of going to label these so you know what they represent. So we have, you know, the bottom, the widest part, you know, the you know, beginning of the cylinder. So change to cylinder. And then we also have the top of our vase here. Uh, now, in thinking about this, notice if you're sort of looking at the, you know, bottle itself, most of the water is going to be in this sort of round portion of the vase. That's where almost everything, like all of the water, like that volume, the amount of water is going to fall. And then there's going to be a little bit of volume, you know, in that sort of top part. And so even before I begin, I could plot out a few sort of of these like key points along the graph. Now, I already pointed out that, you know, the bottom of the vase, I have no water. Well, another key part would be the top of the vase. So we have a top of the vase here. And the top of the vase is going to be when the vase is full, right? It's going to fall right when, you know, there's no water left. And so I can just sort of go over here and go, all right, top of the vase, water's full. Let's make a point. That's where point D would fall because that's going to be the top right? Totally full. Point A was where it was totally empty, you know, sort of giving us those sort of things to think about. Now, we said that most of the water would fall in this sort of circular part. So if I'm sort of then thinking about this volume thing, and this is where you get a little bit of wiggle room, and it's sort of up to you and how you want to split it up. And I noticed there's sort of nine sort of tick marks along this volume of the water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make that last sort of box. That's going to be the very top, which then leaves eight of the squares to be split among this sort of round section of my volume. So like eight cups of water to the one cup of water in the cylinder. And that's a choice. You know, you might choose differently. And the reason why I chose eight is because eight's a nice even number. And if you really think about this sort of breaking it down even more, 
getting to that widest section of the graph right there, that's going to fill up half of that round section. And then the second half is going to be from point B to point C. And so I can further split the volume, the amount of water in my thing, sort of these eight tick marks, four of them to get to point B, and then another four to get to point C. And so then I've sort of split up my graph. Now, why I like to then make the bottle the same height as my graph is I can now sort of do a little bit of like just sort of extending lines across. So like here, you know, B, oops, B should fall, you know, right about there, you know, and I can fill in a point for B. And then, um, you know, I can do a same, I, oops, no, wrong one, same idea for C. And so, you know, I now have several points along my graph. And it might be tempting to be, oh, I'm just going to connect them with the lines that I'm done. But this, that's, we, we need to sort of break it up into smaller chunks. So I sort of took the sort of, you know, main stopping points along the way. Now I want to sort of look at them in sort of smaller intervals. So I'm going to sort of, you know, clean up some of the extra lines I don't need on there. Okay. So what I want to think about is what's happening between point A and point B. Um, now, the vase is getting wider. So, okay, initially I add a cup of water and I'm going to get, you know, a certain amount of water. And I actually might move that up a little bit. Okay, so one cup of water, it fills to this height. The next time I fill my vase, it's not going to fill up quite as much. Uh, the height's going to be a little less this time. You know, than it was the time before. And then the next time I fill up, it's going to be even, you know, oops, I, that's probably not the right location, but I can move it. The next time it should be even less, you know, and so sort of each time along, you're getting less and less water you know, the height's going up less. And you might be going, but why is that happening? Well, initially, my vase is very narrow. You know, there's not a lot of width here. You know, and so a little bit of water is going to raise the water level more. But as my vase gets wider, you know, that width, you know, it has to cover sort of more area, if I think about cross sections, to sort of fill that wider vase. And so the height's not going to go up quite as much. So each subsequent additional cup of water should result in less and less height being added. And so you can sort of see that if I go in and I now like connect these, this is where that amounts of change language becomes so happy. So for each additional, you know, equal amount of volume added, that height in water goes up by a little less each time. And so you can really focus on that, that, that change in height right there and see how it's, you know, it's increasing. The height is increasing, but it's increasing by less, by smaller and smaller amounts. Now, that would be using amounts of change language. If we then wanted to turn that into rates of change language, it's increasing but it's increasing at a decreasing rate because if we turned each of these into rates of change, I would notice that the value of my rates and change are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So the rate of change of height is also decreasing. All right, now we're gonna basically repeat this process from points B to point C. Um, and so uh, we're gonna use a new color. And so just again, initially, you know, we wouldn't have you know, that much of a change in height for an additional cup of water. But the next cup of water, you know, it's going to go up a little more and a little more. Um, oops, I didn't mean to grab that one. Sometimes it gets mad at me. Ah. Um, stop snapping. So, you know, we went up a little more this time. Um, next time it's going to go up even more. 
and the last time it's going to go up even more because this time my vase is getting narrower. And so as my vase is getting narrower, I should be getting, you know, my change in height should be getting more and more as my vase sort of gets wider and, or sorry, backwards, narrower and narrower. Um, and just like last time, you know, I can sort of fill in, you know, points here. And you'll notice, okay, so our height again, our height of water is still going up because that makes sense. As I add water, the height should be increasing. Both of these variables are increasing, but it's how is it increasing? Well, it's increase, the height is increasing by more and more and more, which means the rate of change of my height is increasing at an increasing rate. All right, last but not least, we have a cylinder, and that cylinder piece is going to be just like the previous cylinder problem that you focused on. Um, it's a constant width along. Now, one thing to note, it is the narrowest piece of this bottle. And when you're the narrowest, that means that that height should be going up the quickest, like the largest amount for the same amount of water put in. So what that's going to look like graphically is that means I'm going to end up with this sort of steepest point of my part of my graph is going to be between point C and point D. And since it's cylinder and my width is not changing, it should be going up the same amount, so which means I have a constant rate in this last bit. So here we end up with a constant rate. And then remember in the green section we talked about it was an it's increasing at an increasing rate which was larger and larger amounts in our change of heights. And down below in the bottom section, we were increasing at a decreasing rate because we were increasing our height by less and less and less. Now, notice, you know, I can go back and I'm going to make the graph a little prettier. So we have this sort of key point here at B. We have another key point here at C. I like to keep those labeled. Now, B is actually an even more unique point when it comes to particularly math um, because our rate of change changes at that point. We go from a decreasing rate to an increasing rate. So we would actually refer to B as a point of inflection. And that's something that we're going to talk more about throughout the semester, but you know, you can sort of keep it in the back of your mind. Now, hopefully this sort of helps you think about how to take this sort of more unusually shaped bottle and translate it into a sort of sketched graph. And I sort of verbally talked about what the amounts of change versus the rates of change language might be. But to see a more detailed, specific, you know, what does my actual sentence look like, please look ahead at the slides. They're not written out here in the video.